Okay, today we're going to use the make block application that I've loaded downloaded to my uh, laptop and we're going to use that to make a object avoidance program for the Orion board uh, which is the board that I've used in my robot the default code on here is CyberPy. We don't need that, so we get rid of that. Uh, I'm also going to change the screen configuration so that we get a little bit more workspace. And I'm going to switch to upload so that uh, I can show you exactly how it would look if you were going to upload the code to your uh, board. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use uh, my blocks and we're going to make a block and the block that we're going to make is going to is called run motors and I'm going to put the motor commands in this block um, I need to pass two parameters I'm going to pass two uh, motor parameters um, so the first one we're going to call motor one the second one we're going to call motor two Okay, so when we call this up, it'll ask us for the two different parameters, which will be the percentage power in each motor, and the motor commands are here, and one of our motors is on port one, and, and the other one is on motor port two, and the first one is wired to go anti-clockwise when we're going, because they're in opposite directions. So, uh, motor one, motor two. So in other words, when you call this up and you put, plug in two different values, it's gonna run the motors. So that's, that's called a custom block. And you can use custom blocks to combine a lot of different things and it makes it a lot easier for a lot of things. Okay, so that's your blocks. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, uh, the first event's gonna be when the Orion board starts up. And the first thing we want to do is we want it to wait. And while it waits, we want to show a, a yellow LED. So we're going to put a yellow LED here. And that's yellow enough. And the LEDs are on port number six. The LEDs are on port number six. The ultrasonic is on port number four, and the seven segment display is on port number three. So we want to use a wait, a wait command, wait until, wait until. The logic commands are always shaped like this. So the logic that we want is when the distance is less than 10 centimeters, go ahead and start the program or go past this wait command. So uh, to, it's gonna be using the ultrasonic sensor and the ultrasonic sensor is on port number four. And if it's less than 10 centimeters, then it's gonna to continue to the next step. Otherwise it's gonna continue looping right here on this wait command or just waiting at the wait command. The next thing we want is we want a forever loop and Underneath the forever loop, we want to set a variable, which is distance. So we're going to go over to the variables and we're going to make a variable called distance. So that we only have to measure our distance once and then we can keep it for that loop. So the first thing we do is we, we measure the distance and we use the ultrasonic sensor, which is on port number four. So in other words, the distance is going to be set at the very top of the loop. Then we're going to display that distance. And the um, seven segment is in fact on three. And what we want to display on there is the distance. So as your robot runs around, it'll constantly be updating the distance that it's reading. So you can use that as a uh, troubleshooting if you need to do any kind of troubleshooting. So after we've done that, then we're really going to get into the uh, uh, into the logic of this, which is an if-then-else statement. 
So if the distance is greater than 30, it's going to go ahead and run it. Otherwise, it's going to turn it, and then it's going to go back up and do the whole loop again. So um, we want to show the LED again. So we're going to, if we're here, we're going to show a one color, and here we're going to show another color. If it's if it's um, greater than 30, we want to show a green LED. And if it's less than 30, in other words, and then else, we want to show a red LED, which is where it's at right now. So let's go ahead and put the logic in there. The logic is greater than 30. And it's based on the variable distance. The distance is greater than 30, then light the green, otherwise light the red. We also want it to move, so that's where we use our move our motor command. So if it's greater than 30, we're gonna push forward at 50% power. If it's not greater than 30, then we're gonna turn the red light on, we're gonna stop the motor, zero, zero. We're going to wait one second just to give the robot a chance to stop. And then we're going to turn the robot using the motor command. So the motor command. And the way we turn it is we give one motor 50% power and the other one minus 50% power, which in other words means running it backwards. And that will turn it. And we only want to do that for a short period of time. So we go back to the wait command here. And we want to do it for about a quarter of a second. At least that's what worked out on my robot. And after a quarter of a second, we want to stop the motor. Because if you leave it going, it'll turn more than what we want. Okay. That's all you need to do. That's that's the whole program right there in a nutshell. Um, when you actually run it and test it, you might have to go back and tweak these uh, directions on your motors, but you shouldn't have to if you're in my class because I've already rewired all of the robots to be this way. So anyways, makes it easier. All these motor commands are all pointing to this one place. So if you would use these motor commands in these four different places and you and it have to change something then you'll you would have to change it in multiple places where this way you only have to change it in the one place inside the predefined block that's it good luck